Let's solve the second of our two throttle valve processes. Air flows through a horizontal constant diameter pipe with a buildup of debris. Air, as an ideal gas, enters at 320K, 900 kilopascal, with a velocity of 30 meters per second, and it exits at 305K. Assuming steady state and neglecting stray heat transfer, determine for the air exiting the pipe a, the velocity in meters per second, and B, the pressure in kilopascals. So let's draw a schematic of this situation. We have a pipe. It's a constant diameter pipe. Air is flowing through it, and somewhere in this pipe, there's a buildup of debris. And we're going to model this as a throttle valve because essentially we're pinching the flow of air that is going through this uh, tube or pipe. What we know about state one is everything we need. We know it's temperature, pressure, and velocity, so it's fully defined. State two, not so much. All we know is its temperature. We do know that the diameter did not change. So the area at state one is the same as the area at state two, even though the area where the debris buildup occurs was obviously be less. So we're gonna model this as an open system operating at steady state. There's no mechanism for doing work here, so W dot zero. We were told that there's no heat transfer between the system and the surroundings. And because we have air flowing through a horizontal pipe, we'll take the change of potential energy to be zero, and we will treat the air as an ideal gas. We need to find the velocity and the pressure at the exit. Let's draw a TV diagram so that we can visualize this process. State one is fully defined. It's air at 320 K at a pressure of 900 kilopascals. So I'm going to plot state one where those uh, lines cross, and I'll have some specific volume V1, which is unknown right now. State two has a lower temperature, and because I expect a pressure drop across this debris field here, I'm going to expect that P2 is less than P1. And therefore, uh, the air is going to expand to a lower pressure and a lower temperature. So I'm showing that V2 is greater than V1. So let's write an energy balance for this process. We know for any state process, the ADT is zero. And that is equal to Q dot minus W dot plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Well, we were told that, that there was no heat transfer between the system and the surroundings, so Q dot zero. There's no mechanism for doing work, so W dot zero. And we were also told that there's no change in potential energy because we've got gas flowing through a horizontal pipe. But because uh, this is an expansion process due to the pressure drop, we can't disregard there might be a significant change in kinetic energy. So we'll rewrite the energy balance. It's just zero is equal to H1 minus H2 plus V1 squared minus V2 squared over two. So we can see at this point that this throttle valve is not a constant enthalpy valve. The kinetic energy is uh, change is not zero. So because it's not a uh, constant enthalpy, I'm going to have to find values for H1 and H2. And I can do that in the air tables. Because the air is an ideal gas, its enthalpy values are a function only of temperature. So H1 is at a temperature of 320K. So uh, in the air table at 320K, I get an enthalpy value of 320.29 kilojoules per kilogram. And state two, I know the air temperature is 305K, and so uh, H2 is 305.22 kilojoules per kilogram. So now I can solve uh, my energy balance. Let's rearrange it and solve for the velocity. The velocity at the exit is just V1 squared plus two times the change in enthalpy. That whole term uh, taken to the one half power, in other words, the square root of that term. We can put our values in. We know that V1 was given as 30 meters per second. We just pulled the values of H1 and H2 out of the air table. And I have to convert uh, one kilojoule 
per kilogram, it is equivalent to 1,000 meters squared per second squared. Take the square root of all this, and I get the velocity at state 2 is 176.2 meters per second. Well, the initial velocity was only 30 meters per second, so we can see that the velocity increased substantially. So we were certainly correct in uh, not disregarding the kinetic energy change. So now we need to calculate the pressure. Uh, we'll start with the continuity equation. We know that the mass flow rate is just the area times the velocity divided by the specific volume. And that's true at state one as well as state two. So in this situation, we have a constant diameter plate. So we know that A1 is equal to A2. I can simplify uh, this continuity equation. It's just the velocity divided by the specific volume at state one is equal to the velocity at state two divided by its specific volume. Well, this is an ideal gas. I can write the specific volume as RT over P. And I'll, let's substitute RT over P for each of these two specific volumes. So in the uh, left side of our equation becomes the velocity at state one times the pressure at state one divided by the gas constant times T1. That is equal to the velocity at state two times the pressure at state two divided by the gas constant times T2. Let's rearrange that and solve for P2, which is our only unknown. We know that that's just the pressure at one times the uh, ratios of velocity, one over two, times the ratio of temperatures, two over one. We have all of these values. We know the initial pressure is 900 kilopascals. And we were given the initial velocity. We just calculated the final velocity. And again, we'll note the, uh, uh, the uh, extensive increase in velocity through this device. And then we have a ratio of temperatures which were given in the problem statement. And we calculate that P2 is 146.1 kilopascals. Remembering that uh, P1 was 900 kilopascals, this is a significant pressure drop. So this debris is really plugged in up this pipe.